Hello, everybody. This is the new uh, long, boring conversation with Drew series, also known as the soon to be discontinued long, boring conversation with Drew series. Uh, This is not a concise uh, to the point uh, type video. This is a long, boring conversation with Drew. So if you have a short attention span and you need like rockin' music in the background uh, with short explanations that are simple and easy, uh, really, now is a great time to move along to something else um, because this is the opposite of that. This is a morning conversation uh, with Drew over his coffee and, and, and it's really boring and it's long and he gets technical and tries to cover way too much information in a, in a, in a long conversation. So you have been warned. Uh, this is not exciting stuff, so please heed this warning. If you need short attention span stuff, move along. Uh, and for the rest of you, you have been warned. Welcome to the Long Boring Conversation Series with Drew. Hello, everybody. Drew here with the Drew Network. It's 5 o'clock in the morning. I just got out of bed. I'm having my first cup of coffee. And uh, I received a message from a vice president um, today that uh, is one of dozens that I have received along the same lines over the past month or months even now. Uh, You know, people write and ask questions, and that's fine. If I can answer your question, I will do the best I can to answer it as best as I am able. Um, And it was a question about lenses. And so I'm going to try the impossible really impossible. The, the real answer to any lens question takes years of experience and learning. Uh, but I'm going to attempt to, within the next few minutes before this coffee runs out, uh, to give you a rundown on the very, very basics uh, of, of, of a very basic introduction to lenses. Uh, meaning that if you're an old pro, this video is not for you. Move on. Uh, if you are, however, getting started, uh, you're, you're, you're new to uh, DSLR or DSLM uh, video, uh, and, and you're, you're just getting acquainted with lenses, then this early morning conversation with Drew is for you. Uh, first of all, an interchangeable lens camera is about lenses. An interchangeable camera, an interchangeable lens camera is about the lenses. It's all about the lenses. You have, in the past three years, we've had an interesting scenario where where, where photography has merged with uh, video. Really, I would call it crashed with video. So you've got guys with video backgrounds who think uh, lenses are a peripheral thing and all that matters is the sensor. Uh, and then you've got photography guys who understand it's all about the lenses, and, and both of them have complex opinions and they talk past each other. Uh, I would rather have a, a, a magnificent optics on a mediocre sensor. I would rather have that than the world's greatest sensor connected to a mediocre lens. And the proof of the formula that works is the Canon HDSLR revolution. Uh, your Canon 5D Mark II that changed the world is all about great optics plugged up to a mediocre video sensor. It's a great still photography sensor, but relative to video, it's a pretty mediocre damn sensor. And that formula changed the world. So in theory, if you understand what I just said, it proves the point. I would rather have great optics plugged up to a mediocre sensor than, you know, compromised optics hooked up to the best sensor in the universe. So the point here being that an interchangeable lens camera is all about the lenses. It is all about the lenses. Uh, sometimes people getting started in the business, or sometimes even these old video guys, they, they think, well, I need to budget the camera, and what's the cheapest lens I can get for it? Why buy an interchangeable lens camera? That is a formula for mediocre results. That's a formula for a disaster. In the photography world, the way it works is lenses normally cost twice or three times the cost of a camera body. The idea being that you buy lenses to last for years and you then replace the camera body every few years. 
That's why a, 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 you can buy a DSLR body for a thousand bucks. And that's why lenses sometimes cost, you know, one to three to five thousand dollars because lenses can last for years. Lenses can last for many cameras into the future. Uh, camera bodies become obsolete within about three years and get replaced. In modern camera bodies with digital sensors, etc. So again, the major point here that, that really I'm trying to get across here in our early morning conversation as I have, have my early morning cup of coffee here is it's all about the lenses. Lenses are not an afterthought. You don't budget the camera and then think, oh my God, well, what's the cheapest piece, what's the cheapest lens I can get? It's all about the lenses, folks. The image that is created is, is from the lens. Uh, I cannot emphasize this point enough. In other words, and if any of this is, is shocking to you, then, then now you begin rethinking it, rethinking everything, because an interchangeable lens camera is all about the lenses. Excuse me while I have a sip of coffee. So lenses aren't an afterthought. Lenses are your real investment. You buy camera bodies to go along with your lens collection. You don't buy lenses to go along with your camera collection. And this is a massive point. And if you understand what I have just repeated five times uh, and I'm attempting to get across to you, then, then, then you're actually you're, you're better off and you're getting somewhere. Uh, your imaging is all about the lenses. Now, in the lens area, there are two major kinds of lenses. Uh, and this applies across all the various lens formats. Uh, there are what are called prime lenses, and then there are variable focal length lenses that are called zoom lenses. A prime lens means you can't zoom. A zoom lens, most of you know. You're all familiar with that. Zooms come on consumer cameras, I think, even the point and shoots, where if you zoom in, you, you get closer, and if you zoom out, you get further away. You want a wider angle, you, you zoom out. Uh, and if you, if you want to, you know, get in tight to someone or someone's face, you zoom in. That's variable focal length. Uh, and, and, and there are two major kinds of lenses. There's the zoom lens that offers you the convenience of being able to zoom. And then there are prime lenses, which means it's one fixed focal length. And if you zoom in or zoom out, you do it with your feet. You can walk closer to your subject or you walk further away from the subject. You don't have the luxury of being able to turn a dial or press a button or, or push a switch to zoom in and zoom out. Slightly less convenient. But the difference between the two is massive. Optically, and, and, and which is all that matters if you're producing videos or films or photography, optically, a prime lens is vastly superior to a zoom lens. Vastly superior. On a range of levels, the big ones being low light and distortion, I'll get into that in a minute. For the convenience of being able to zoom in or zoom out, you don't have to walk. For the convenience of being able to push that switch or turn the dial or whatever it is on your, your convenient zoom, for the convenience of that zoom, you are paying dearly optically. You are paying dearly. You are getting distortion, massive distortion on, that you don't get with prime lenses. What is distortion? Well, it means when you zoom out, you get that, it's called barrel distortion, where everything looks rounded. Uh, but that barrel distortion is a lot nastier than it looks when you point it at a landscape. Uh, if you aim it at a human face, anything, but people see it most on a human face. If you aim it on a human face, it does all sorts of funky, weird things to the human face. Uh, to the ladies out there, you know, there's an old expression, well, the camera adds 10 pounds. Well, it's not the camera that adds 10 pounds, it's the lens. And if it's adding 10 pounds, it's a crappy lens, like a zoom lens. Uh, where if you're, if you're backed out and getting barrel distortion, it'll do funky things to the face. Uh, if you zoom in, you're moving away from the barrel distortion range and you're getting into what's called the pincushion distortion range. There are flattering pincushion distortions 
And then there are funky, strange, and unflattering pin cushion, dis pin cushion distortions for the human face. Again, it depends on the lens, the maker, the manufacturer. Uh, but no matter where you're doing with a zoom, you're dealing with distortion. Next, the dis zoom lenses don't do as well in low light. Uh, and lenses that do badly, and this is going to be confusing, but I'm trying to pack four years into the next two minutes. Um, uh, lens for the again another issue that you pay for with a zoom lens is it's not as good in low light uh that means your images less light is getting through to the sensor your images are going to look darker because they're darker you're going to have to add uh, gain in video or iso in photography and that's going to make your images noisier and more grainy uh so so you compensate by that for adding a shitload of light so so in the world of production, be it still photography or digital cinematography or cinematography, but that's a little traditional film cinematography is a different discussion, sort of. Um, in the world of production, there are two kinds of lenses. There's the inconvenient prime lens that only has one fixed focal length, and you do your zooming with your feet. You walk closer to your subject or you back up. Uh, th that's the prime lens, and then there's the, the zoom lens, the variable focal length, which gives you the convenience of being able to zoom. The difference between those two lenses is monumental. Prime lenses are better in low light. They have less distortion. Uh, they're sharper. Uh, they, they, on some of the 50 millimeter and beyond, you're getting the shallow focus d depth of field where you get the blurry background and the beautiful subject in focus. Prime lenses are gorgeous. 90% of everything you've ever seen from Hollywood is shot with a prime lens. 90% of real pro photographers, portraiture, who do, you know, pro, real pro work, a l overwhelming percentage of that is done with prime lenses. On the other side is the zoom lens, the variable focal length. That's on consumer cameras. It's convenient. You don't have to step back a few feet. And the image sucks relative to prime lenses. The image is inferior. You are paying dearly in terms of distortion and light loss, uh, sharpness, uh, usually more chromatic aberration and other problems. All that crap all comes with the zoom lenses. So you say, well, I just went on, on eBay, which you never buy lenses on eBay. If I have time to fit that in, I'll, I'll can, how long have I been talking now? 12 minutes. I'm failing in my mission of a short conversation about lenses. Uh, you, you say, well, I went on eBay or Amazon. Don't buy lenses on eBay. Uh, and I see that this zoom lens from Canon costs $2,500. And this prime lens from Canon costs $350. How is it possible that a $350 lens is better than a $2,500 lens? Uh, and the answer is the $350 lens is better than the $2,500 lens. A prime lens is always, almost always, there are a few, very few exceptions. So I'm going to slight, very slightly generalize here. A prime lens is always better than a zoom lens. I would rather have a, 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 a $350 uh, 50 millimeter f1.4 Canon EF lens than a $2,500 uh, Canon, I think it's 17 to 35, I don't know, I know that's a Nikon, uh, Canon L lens. Absolutely. The kit lens that comes with the 5D Mark II that I think is $1,200, $1,500, bucks, something like that. It's an L lens. I believe it's the 24 to 70, or there's a that was the f2.8, which I think they replaced with an f4, 24 to 105, or something like that. I, I don't remember, but I'm in the right ballpark. Uh, I would rather have the $350 Canon 50mm f1.4 than the Canon L lens kit lens, period. Uh, prime lenses are always better than, um, than, than zoom lenses. Uh, 
Okay, so we, we've covered what? Number one, we've covered that uh, it's all about the lenses. You buy camera bodies to go along with your lens collection. You don't buy lenses to go with your camera. Number two, we covered there are the difference between prime lenses and, and, and zoom lenses and the fact that the prime lenses are, are massively superior optically. And optically is all that matters if you're, if you're attempting to produce professional results. Uh, you can say to your client, well, uh, this lens was more convenient. The your client doesn't care what, if it was convenient for you. It, it's like the AF100. This is totally unrelated. Uh, the AF100 is a professional camera that has a perfect feature set, but the images it creates are inferior to a Sony FS100 uh, that has an awful feature set and, and is you know, a terrible form factor. What are your, which one matters? And I wish someone would explain this to Panasonic. Which one matters? I'm in the business of selling images to clients. The only thing that matters is the image. The, the feature set for, for my pro side is irrelevant. So I have just veered off the road here. Um, but I was making a point that the, if you're dealing, if, you're, if, you're go, if your goal is to deliver pro results, then the only thing that matters is the image. Um, so in any event, Maybe I'll edit that out if I have time or care to. Okay, everybody, I've been going on here for a long time. Uh, my coffee has run out. And basically, um, I, I just spent the past five minutes, I, I went off a cliff, off topic. So in theory, I've edited that out and come back to this point. And basically what I'm going to do here is end lens conversation one here. Uh, unfortunately, that means there's going to be a lens conversation too. Uh, and in that, in that conversation, I'll, I'll cover, uh, you know, lens ratings, f-stops, basic principles with that. Uh, I'll go over some of the lens formats. So this concludes lens conversation one, uh, where we have in theory established the fact that you buy camera bodies to go along with your lens collection and uh, that prime lenses are incredibly better than zoom lenses. This is Drew. <clears throat> I'm going to go make, <coughs> excuse me, here in the morning, uh, here at Drew Network HQ, and I'm going to go make my second cup of coffee. And if I'm not bored to death, I'll, uh, I'll film Conversation 2 uh, about lenses. This is Drew wishing you well. Hope this was helpful to some of you. See you.